This is quality content. Reason number three why Kawadis make great pets. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In the last episode, we introduced uh, our five Kawada Mondays, including the th three new ones that we got. And we showed you guys how friendly they are. And we were thinking that we should go through the reasons why Kawada Mondays make excellent pets for the average person and why you should probably go out right now and buy one as a pet. So reason number one is that they have extremely sharp teeth and that's a great quality for a personal pet uh they are omnivores oh and you're trying to steal my pocket knife Whoop. Oh, oh and uh <laughs> let's go with reason number one they're kleptomaniacs okay <laughs> they want to steal everything that you have at all times anything in your pockets will be taken out um i usually i do a good job of emptying my pockets typically forgot my pocket knife um but uh yeah so i have to take out my wallet any money keys literally any hey, get out of there um <laughs> so they want to go into everything and uh take whatever you might have so that's awesome if you want to test like your reflexes yeah get a quaddy there you go number two they have sharp claws and teeth which is exactly what you want for a pet okay <laughs> So um, yeah, they are omnivores. And so they have very sharp claws, be able to dig around for food and very, very sharp teeth. This one's got its butthole on my head right now. And, uh, but yeah, so very sharp teeth and claws of those things. And so if you upset them, um, they will bite you. And uh, the bite is pretty serious. Uh, one quick, very quick bite can very easily hospitalize you requiring stitches and uh, it'll, It'll rip you right open. Reason number three why Kawadis make great pets, they are just so determined and I love that quality about them. In fact, they are so determined. If it is your time of the month, ladies, and you have something that they want, they will go in your pants and get them and there is nothing you can do about it. Uh, what, I, what happens if you try to stop them from getting something they want? Well, especially in a quaddy like Lola, if you try to stop her, she will attack you. And that is not sarcasm. And it goes back to reason number two why they make great pets, razor sharp teeth. Yes. So I just I just love their determination. You can't tell them no. They just, they will do it regardless. And as soon as you try to stop it, it just immediately bites you. It makes really cute attack squeaks. It's adorable. It's just like such a great quality to have in a pet. So like determined and no doesn't mean anything. Like that's great. Another reason is that they are double jointed. And so their little, especially their little back feet, they go like backwards. And so when they're on you, it's like Velcro. Like you cannot get them off of you. And uh, so if you try, like, like if she's on me and she's got her claws, ow, like that, those claws don't feel good. Um, so, or no, they, they feel great. It's a great pet, it's great for exfoliation. <laughs> But yeah, so when she's on me and I'm trying to get her off of me, those feet just like go backwards and they just latch on and you can't get them off. And that's especially helpful when they're biting. And if you love unhealthy, jealous, possessive relationships, Kawadis are for you. Because uh, Lola gets very possessive of me. And when the other ones try to come over and say hi or climb on me or whatever, she will attack them. And then they will fight on top of me. And that's really fun. And you definitely don't get bit as well. So it's, it's really good. If you like supporting niche professions, Kawada Mondays are the pet for you. Because they can't go to a normal vet. You have to find an exotic vet. And guess what? Because they are raccoons, a lot of veterinarians will not see raccoons or Kawada Mondays which means if your animal gets sick, you might have to drive three, four hours to the nearest vet just to get them treated. Do you have a ton of money just laying around, like $10,000 that you have in your bank account and you're like, I wonder what I should do with this money. You should get a Quad of Monday because they need a ton of space. We have a 40 by 20 enclosure with ropes and nets and nest boxes. And the wire alone probably costs us about four thousand dollars and we also had to wire the entire bottom they'll also dive bomb you so if you like you know surprises you should get a quad monday if you want to hand raise an adorable baby animal that will love you dearly and then suddenly violently turn against you and try to kill you this is the pet for you 
Yes, because when they hit sexual maturity, it is a total crapshoot. You have no idea what's going to happen. Sometimes they stay nice. Sometimes they become extremely aggressive towards you and will decide that they now hate you and want to kill you. And so you don't know where it's going to go. You have no way of predicting how it's going to turn out. So that is a great twist if you like those kind of books and <laughs> movies. Okay. Do you like free dental care? You should probably get a Quadamundi because they want to go in your ears, your eyes, in your mouth. They will not only put their entire snouts covered in bacteria and raw chicken in your mouth, they will also use their hand to try to scoop out whatever you have. It's disgusting. So you should definitely get a Quad Monday. Ow, God, why? <laughs> so. <laughs> Just gonna jump on your head. I know. That's definitely Lola. <laughs> She's, She's so crazy. Yeah, look at look at my arm. I know, dude. Look at me. I'm bleeding too. Oh my god. I don't think I can come in here without a jacket on. Like, so yeah. To uh, you know, stop with the jokes and actually be serious for a minute. These things do not make good pets at all. Like at all. And you know, we're constantly repeating this. You know, we. It's a balancing act because we want to show you how cute animals are. And, you know, we want people to appreciate them and like them. We're like, look how cute they are, you know? And so we're always doing this balancing act of trying to show animals as cute and adorable so that people will be interested and want to care about them and protect them and care about their conservation. But then you run into the problem of, oh my God, those are so cute. I want one. No, you don't. Get out of my butt. These <laughs> things are incessant, okay? <laughs> Can I help you? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, they are, well, they are definitely incessant, um, but they are also like really aggressive and dangerous at times. And yeah, like most of the time they're, they're pretty cute, but do not dig there, okay? Um, most of the time they are pretty cute and adorable, um, but especially when they get possessive about something or you try to take something away, they will rip you up. I mean, right now I'm bleeding on my arm and that that's just from them crawling around. You know, it's not a big deal. And they don't just possess over objects. Lola possesses over hands. Yeah. Uh, well, it's just really if you're trying to take anything away. So if it's like right now, this isn't Lola here. Uh, but if, if it, it was. If it was, when they're just trying to sniff at you and you're like, hey, stop it. And you try to brush her away, she's going to immediately latch onto your hand. And like their teeth, I mean, they've got, hey, you stab it. Oh my god. I killed it. I think that's Coco. <laughs> Coco. Oh. Coco. Oh my gosh. Yeah, well, good. Better you than me. Ow. Can you please? We're trying to show everybody why you make a great pet. So, you know, trying to be serious for a minute here without one attacking me. Um, yeah, they're really, really bad pets and they're so cute and so adorable that, you know, people are like, oh my God, I want one of these things. And like, you really don't for the reasons we just gave. I mean, first and foremost, it can hospitalize you pretty quickly, especially once it hits sexual maturity, you don't know which way it's gonna go. And this is the case with a lot of wild animals. And that's why I've done so many videos talking about domesticated animals versus wild animals and the differences. And so a lot of wild animals, they're very cute, cuddly when they're babies and they love you. And then as soon as they hit sexual maturity, it flips. A good example of how this sexual maturity thing comes into play is our hornbill Zazu. We raised him from a baby, hand raised him. He used to sleep on my shoulder all the time. And then he hit maturity and then he became obsessed with trying to gouge out my eyes. And right now we're doing good. We're at a good point with him. Not with me. I am now. Okay. <laughs> Maybe not with you, but right now I'm at a good point with him. But it, it flips. It goes back and forth. And, you know, again, it's because he's a wild animal. He's not domesticated at all. Same thing with these guys, you know. Uh, when they hit sexual maturity, their personalities can completely and dramatically change. And it can really go bad for you as the caretaker. So we have some construction going on over here. So we'll continue the conversation outside. So yeah, we just really wanted to kind of cover that point that these animals have a lot of requirements. They need a lot of space, you know, they're not gonna be able to just live in a small cage or inside of your house, you know? And they are very expensive, you know, to be able to feed them, the vet care, uh, the enclosure. The I mean- monthly prevention for fleas. Yeah, so just, I don't, I don't know how to say it without just saying like, 
thousands, tens of thousands of dollars have already gone into all this. You know, we're spending tons of money on these guys to be able to set them up properly and be able to feed them properly. They need a diversity of food in their diet. They're omnivores. They eat all kinds of different things. So we have to give them a lot of different stuff. And then enrichment with their food as well. Having a variety of food is really good for enrichment for them. They're very scent driven as well. So giving them all kinds of weird little things like smelly fish or like cinnamon or, you know, whatever, that's really, really good for them. But a lot of money like a lot of money over a long time well they live 15 years yeah and they're just so smart they really need constant enrichment i mean we have some ropes and some nets but we do like chris said like um different scent enrichment we're gonna put especially when it's summer i want to plant some like oregano or basil around it so like things that like smell really good we do a lot of the cinnamon enrichment yeah. i've seen some zoos do like soap enrichment things like that but, um, well, they also have each other. That's mm -hmm, the other thing, too, is we yeah. wanted to have them. They are a social animal. They live in a social group. So that's why, uh, you know, originally we just had Lola, but we always had plans of having multiple animals. Now, I didn't plan on having five of these things. <laughs> that was a surprise. Um, but, uh, you know, we always did plan on having multiple animals because they are social. So that's another good point, too, is you don't want to have just one. You know, you want to have them be able to have well, a social males, interaction. Well, males usually are solo or in a group of females, but the females are social. And with social animals, it's not always easy as a sanctuary because, like, we don't want to go out and buy animals. Um, I mean, if it comes down to it where an animal is lonely and we have to get it companioned, like, we will do that. But we want to be able to rescue them, but it's not always easy. You know, yeah. like we've had a few people offer us lemurs and we haven't accepted them because we don't want to just have one. Um, but we also recognize that a lot of sanctuaries are filling up and don't have the space to have huge enclosures. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a, a struggle. It's an expensive thing. It's a thing that requires a lot of space, a specialized diet, and also will, uh, you know, definitely make you bleed. Okay. <laughs> We've also had a lot of people asking if we're going to offer interactions here with the ones that we have, with the friendlier ones, and uh, probably not. It's going to take, uh, if we were to do that, it would take some training and a serious uh, liability waiver. Okay. You having a good time there, Clovey? <laughs> But, um, but yeah, just because the uh, potential for damage to happen very, very quickly is so high. Uh, it's Just Google Coatamundi bite. Yeah, well, and, and the way they flip, you know, like it goes from like zero cute, cuddly, and like everything's great, and then you're just sliced right open. And we're know? fast. I like to think Chris and I are pretty fast. You cannot get away from Lola. Like even as a reflex, if she grabs your phone and you just like try to get, she's quicker. Yeah, we, so, we are telling you this from experience. <laughs> well, then I have people in my comments that are just like, well, if you say that, then why do you let them do that? I, I want to I want to shake these people because I work with dangerous animals for a living. That's that's what I do, you know, so I am learning how to interact with these animals that are potentially dangerous. That's what I do, guys. Um, sorry, I just get so annoyed. I get so so many of these comments every day. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so what I've learned in this case is prevention making sure you don't have anything that she can fixate on and possess on. And uh, so I try to always empty my pockets today. I, I forgot my pocket knife, you know, and that, did that you pick it been, up or is it? No, I gotta go there? grab it. But <laughs> that, that could have been an issue right there. Like I, I really try to be really good. Like, you know, try to empty my pockets, make sure I don't have anything in there. Um, having proper footwear, proper clothing. But even with your shoes, Lola has gone after your shoes before and has tried to like rip, rip them up. Well, with these, she's been fine. With the leather ones? Yeah. Well, so we, we had ones. rubber boots and she was trying to rip them up and eat it. And you you could, you can't stop her. Yeah. You have to trade with them. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. That, that one, too. Yeah. So when they have something, you're not getting it back unless you give them something they want more. Thanks for watching, guys. And, you know, just the takeaway we always say is that exotic <laughs> animals do not make good pets. They are not for everybody. Now, there are some people who are responsible and they do have them and they do a good job. And that does happen, you know. But just like with most things, um, that is the rarity it is not the norm the norm is people impulse by a cute animal and then you know once it hits sexual maturity it rips them up and they get rid of it you know and that's what we don't want to have happen so again we just want to really emphasize that exotic animals do not make good pets for everybody and if you want to have a pet go with domestic or do your research, do your homework, volunteer at a place where you can gain experience with exotic animals. And then maybe you can move in that world once you are experienced in that world. But you know, we don't wanna like totally tell people like you shouldn't do what we do because you could try to follow our path as well. We have literally 
decades between the two of us of experience working with these kinds of animals and that's why we're able to take these on but for the normal person if you don't own exotics you don't have experience working with exotics you definitely don't want one of these things